Okay, first a little bit of intro before we go into images. So what is bit depth? Bit depth specifies how much color possibilities we can have for each pixel in an image. How many possibilities we can have, not how many we actually have. That's, or, uh, that's decided by the image itself. But how many possibilities we can have. Okay, so if you would like to learn more about bit depth in general and all of this you can check out this video here and you can click on if you have annotations opened inside of YouTube you can click on it if not I'll leave a link either in my blog or here below the YouTube video so you can check that out the video you can you can also search it on my channel it's called bit depth in depth all you never wanted to know about bit depth it's just a very extensive way of looking at it from start to finish so after that you should be able to follow anything regarding bit depth but in case you already know that, let's continue. So standard RGB image in 8 bits per channel mode can have up to about 16.7 million distinct color possibilities. Again, can have, doesn't mean it always has. But 16.7 million, okay? Now optimists say that that best human eye would be able to distinguish about 10 million distinct color possibilities which is more than enough then for that 8 bits per channel mode image to give us smooth gradations, right? So 8 bits per channel image, full color, 3 channel, has more than enough bits to present a smooth gradient, depending on the viewing device. Not all monitors can do it. But it should be enough. So the question is, if 8 bits ch per channel mode is enough to display a smooth continuous tone, why would we ever need more? And how much more would we need, right? Well, first, let's talk about why would we need more. Okay, so there's this thing called posterization or banding. Everybody talks about it. You must have heard about it. Basically, what it happens is that when we don't have enough bits inside of an image, we can display a smooth gradient or smooth gradations inside of a face or some other parts of the image. Now, when we do have it and we do some extensive editing inside of Photoshop, it's destructive, so we lose some of that and we need more. How much more we need and when we need it, that's the key point I want to try to answer in this video. So the next best thing after 8-bit would be 16-bit or for purists out there that's actually 15 bits per channel. I have a video I mentioned earlier about that so you can check that out if you want. So the question is when would you choose 8-bit, when would you choose 16 bits per channel mode? Now in a raw workflow as you can see on this graphic here we are always working with more than enough bits inside of camera capture, then of course inside of raw converter. The only place where this is somewhat of a debate is when we're doing Photoshop editing. And that's exactly the part where all this confusion comes in and that's what I want to talk about in this video. There's also a matter of outputting to clients and so on and so forth and printing. That's almost always 8-bit and I will talk about that in some other video. For now, all I want to talk about and discuss is actually when do we choose 8 and when 16-bit. Alright, so the, now that we understand that we need more, we have more than enough in 8-bit per channel mode, and we have more than enough bits to present or show smooth gradients. We don't have enough sometimes that when we do our edits inside of Photoshop, that's a keyword here, inside of Photoshop, that we can retain our smooth gradations after we made some changes like curves and levels and things like that. Well, this is an interesting image. Let me show you how the original image looked. Okay, so this image had gradations in the background, not too harsh, but there is some. It has pretty harsh shadows here and highlights. It's also quite heavily overexposed, I would say. Uh, we barely have some detail left here. But because this is a raw file and we're working inside a raw converter, we can take the full advantage of all the raw data that came from camera as well as the fact that we are working in 16-bit. Camera raw works in fact in 16-bit per channel. So that's more than enough. I can do all kinds of crazy edits and nothing will bad happen to this image pretty much. In fact, if I activate my adjustments so you can see, I have managed to pull out some details in the face and you know I have even smoothed out the gradients a little bit here so it wasn't that bad now here's the key question 
what I'm going to do next with this image. That's important to know because that will decide how will I proceed with this image when I take it into Photoshop. And here at the bottom there is an option called um, basically a link to choose your workflow options. And uh, among other things we are not interested at the moment there is an option called depth. Of course if I am done with all my edits and this is the kind of image that I want, I may just have to want to clone and heal a bunch of stuff, then I would choose 8 bits per channel here. However, if I know that client might change their mind and might want some kind of a color correction to this, or I decide that maybe I want to try some stuff with adjustment layers inside of Photoshop, then I want some extra, extra bits for editing. In that case, I would choose 16 bit. Now for demonstration purposes, let's say this is 8-bit. I have already processed this, so I'm just going to click cancel and uh, here's the same file inside of Photoshop. Now let's say I do my edits here. Look at the uh, face here, right? I just made small adjustments, I made some healing and cloning, nothing major. And now I have decided, or client has decided, well wait a minute, we want you to change this image, we want you to add some color correction to this, make it more vibrant, make it more dynamic. And maybe I can apply here a, a selective color adjustment to this, and make it more fashionable if you will. At this point I am editing the file beyond just small blemish removals and things like that, right? I am making some bigger adjustments and now I'm in danger of causing banding or posterization. In fact, if I deactivate this layer and I look at this area here, well there is some banding showing up. It's not that harsh, maybe you can see it here, especially because this will be a compressed video for YouTube, but you know what I mean, there's some elements of banding here because we didn't have that much data to sustain this kind of edit. But still the image is clinging pretty well, it's not that hard, I mean we can add maybe a slight bit of noise here and we'll be fine. But if you do want to continue edit here and add some extra adjustments like curves and so on and so forth, and you have this kind of harsh transition type image with a lot of gradients, then using 16-bit for that would make sense, and I would highly recommend it, just to make sure. Okay, but here's another example. Now this is a borderline image. Uh, I'm not going to show you all the process of opening up inside of Camera Raw and all that because there is no need. Here's what's inter interesting about this image. Even though there are no real gradients here inside the background, right, or such really harsh sh shadows, it's pretty almost high key image, almost, but it's not really. But I mean, there's a lot of whites in the image, like white background, the milk's being spilled against the contrast of her dark skin. However, all these small transitions here, you know, where the milk is being spilled, all this on the arms, all these areas. Well, those areas are where you might, if you continue editing the file through curves and other elements, you might find that you're going to start to see some posterization, especially if you are maybe doing uh, one edit after another, maybe two, three, four different curve adjustments to get that tweak and get that perfect skin tone or something like that, right? So in those cases, this is a borderline issue. You could get away with 8-bit, but maybe 16-bit is just a safer way to go. Here's another example of the same kind of problem. A lot of harsh transitions. There's no gradients in the background, but there are harsh transitions on her back where this kind of light is being spilt over, right? Uh, on her arm, this kind of volumetric feel to it. So that's a place where posterization could in fact be a problem. I would use 16-bit. Unless I know that I have done all my major edits inside of RAW Converter and I don't want to do anything else beyond cloning and healing and dodging and burning inside of Photoshop. What about this one? Well here 16-bit would be an overkill and it would not provide you with any benefits whatsoever. And here's why. Let me scroll down back to the original. So this was the original, see? This was the retouched the original retouched. So majority of the things that I've done here has to do with 
cloning, healing, dodging and burning, all those little things that has nothing to do with major edits. And when I finally did make an edit, it wasn't that big or the image wasn't that kind in character that would create all those problems with posterization. So in this case, if you have this kind of tight crop and no harsh shadows, no gradients whatsoever, using 16 bit here by default, you know, just because you think it's better would not provide you any benefits whatsoever. It would just make the file bigger, takes more time to save, apply the adjustments. So no, I would not use 16 bit here. Here's another example. So here was this was the original image. Uh, this was I knew this image was going to be posted on the web, by the way. So I knew my output. And if you look, this is the original image after it was taken from Camera Raw. And I knew this was going to be on the uh, is going to be presented on the web. So I did make some adjustments here, but as you can see, there I mean I did make adjustments in terms of color and tone, but I knew that this image don't have any really harsh transitions and what are some transitions that are here in the hair are not that big of a deal and I knew that this was going to be web only and because I knew this is going to be web only I knew that there was going to be applied some kind of compression anyway whether it's on Facebook or on other uh, places where I might post this and no matter how much I try to preserve the smooth gradations in some small areas they will show up because of the compression of the web. So, and that's the only output, so it makes no sense that I work in 16-bit here. Here is an example of an image. Actually, let me open up this inside of Camera Raw as well. And uh, this is made with phase one, so it's a big file. And as you can see, this was the original shot. Uh, it's more of a way the Camera Raw uh, has uh, processed the white balance then that it's the bad shot so but it still needs some adjustments nothing major so this was the actual adjustments and that's pretty much it now if I click okay and I take it into Photoshop I don't plan to do any big adjustments anyway here there's no smooth gradations in the background it's all white uh, you know there are no really harsh transitions here so I've done all my major edits so if I do color correct I mean if I do um, adjustments on the skin, none of that warrants me using a 16-bit per channel mode here. And especially because this is a huge file, I mean this is from phase one, right, so there's a lot of, um, I mean this is a pretty big resolution here, um, pixel dimensions, sorry, as you can see. So it really makes no sense for me to waste my processing time and, and storage space for 16-bit here because I won't be doing any big edits and the image is such that it doesn't require it. And a little bit of that digression from fashion and beauty and all that kind of stuff into weddings because I have heard some people talk about this idea of that you should always use 16-bit and some of these people are wedding photographers and to me that's almost absurd because there's no way that it will pay off to work with so many images inside weddings uh, for that purpose and use 16-bit. With few examples might be uh, a special image that you want to print really big or use for promotion or something but for the most part it just doesn't make sense so use 8-bit and here was the uh, actual image so I did most of my edits as you can see in actually everything was done inside of uh, Camera Raw uh, with actually there are quite a few adjustments here inside of Camera Raw but as you can see everything was done inside of Camera Raw now at this stage only thing I would do inside of Photoshop maybe would be to remove this hand or a few other things like here but that's it right I don't need 16-bit for this and on the other hand if I were a landscape photographer and I have this big landscape with where I spend maybe you know months or days store, uh, spending time in one place waiting for that perfect sunset with lots of gradients and vibrant colors and I'm not mass producing this I'm gonna print this on a big canvas maybe put it in a gallery or something that's the place where 16 bit makes perfect sense but not here so know your context anybody who tells you that 16 bit is always better isn't right 
in ideal world we wouldn't care we would always use 16-bit because all the storage space and processing power and everything would be perfect but we're still not there so until we get to that point we can safely use 8-bit now another thing that I want to point out here is that can you imagine working on a composite shot where you have potentially hundreds and hundreds of layers and working in 16-bit and maybe even combining different elements from different images that you know separate PSD files it will be a total overkill to work with 16-bit just wouldn't make sense alright let's summarize everything we've learned so the nature of your edits will determine your workflow that makes sense right in other words context is everything landscape versus um, wedding photography and fashion versus beauty and so on and so forth web versus print output and so many other variables also uh, keep in mind that 8 bits per channel is more than enough to display continuous tones so you don't have to worry about that but sometimes it's just not enough for major tonal and color adjustments like curves and levels and so on to retain that smooth gradation that is why the only advantage of 16 bits per channel is to add in that extra room to maneuver but that only makes sense when you're inside of Photoshop because when you're inside the raw converter of almost any kind and using raw files then you don't have to worry about that you're already working with 16 bits but in Photoshop it, it matters that is why I think when you know you're dealing with images that have smooth gradations and and shadow to highlights harsh transitions they're in most danger of showing posterization or banding after editing that is why I would recommend that you do whenever possible uh, use your raw converter for major tonal and color adjustments do as much as you can while you can inside of raw and then bring it into Photoshop and then if you have to do it there more go to 16 bits per channel mode also adding digital noise or film grain to your gradients can sometimes help in hiding bending and there are other methods and dirty tricks we can use even in 8-bit but I'll discuss that more and perhaps in another video I didn't include it here so maybe next time uh, but there are ways in which you can even in 8-bit to get away with it and also keep in mind that sometimes no matter how many bits per channel you use in your images there will be visible bending because of the limitations of the display device such as your monitor and also if you Uplo uh, upload it to Facebook for example there will be applied compression to your image and that will introduce additional banding so keep that in mind see you in the next one thank you for watching and if you see any videos that you like on my channel please uh, give me a thumbs up click the like button you know share it if you like with your friends spread a word leave a comment give me some feedback so I can make better videos and if you like to receive more videos that I upload and get a up-to-date state on my channel and the tutorials I make please click on the subscribe button and here's a really interesting thing I would also recommend you see this little icon here this little wheel if you click on it there's an option called send me updates and you click just save that way you will get updates to your directly to your inbox in your email not just on the channel update and you will never miss a video thank you for watching and see you in the next one